You're watching Dreadfully Drawn live. <laughs> It is six years since I set up Dreadfully Drawn. What better way to celebrate than to go through the highs, the lows, the past, the present, and the future. So we'll start off by changing the light because the lighting is not very good. I can see that it's not, it's not, it's not, not great. Uh, I should have recorded this earlier in the day when the lighting was better. So it's six years. It's six years since I started doing Dreadfully Drawn, and in those six years, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about art. I've learned a lot about myself. I haven't learned that much about video editing, as you can quite clearly see, because uh, the whole thing is d a disaster. Yes, six years. Let's do some high points. Let's do some low points. I was just going to do all the highs first and then leave the lows to the end, but I, I think I might do one and then another and then one and another. I think that might be better. So the, the, there have definitely been more highs than there have been lows. Like to do this for six years is an amazing feeling. I love doing it. I absolutely, I say it all the time that I love doing it and it's true. It's a, it's a, it's amazing. I love being able to draw football. I love being able to draw the things that I'm interested in. I love that people have bought my work and have my work on their walls and on t-shirts and things like that. So it is amazing. That doesn't mean that it's all been perfect. There's been quite a few times where I felt like giving up on it. I felt like starting something new, but I'm at a point now where currently, I, I just don't see that as an option. And if anything, I'm more determined than ever to push forward, keep working, and that's what I will hopefully continue to do. So a high point I would say is obviously because I draw football a lot when people who I draw respond to my work. And that hasn't happened loads of times. It's happened maybe, you know, I could probably count on one hand how many times it's happened. The notable ones are Alison Becker, who shared my work onto his Instagram story back in 2021, I'm gonna say. Jamie Carragher shared my drawing towards the start of me doing it. I think it was 2018. Diogo Jot has liked it. Fabinho, he replied to my drawing, I'm gonna say 2022. Maybe last year he fell over and I drew it and and, and he responded straight away and I, I don't know whether it was his team like it might not be him it might be his team that run his social media you know I'm sure he doesn't really monitor what is happening on his Twitter but like his account responded to to my drawn and that was that was that was a great moment with that is a low point when nobody responds and it happens like like I said it happens all the time like I don't know whether they see it. I don't know whether they see the drones, but a lot of the time, no one actually responds to the drones. No one actually comments on the drones or likes the drones or anything like that. It, it, you are ignored whenever you tag them in it generally. And that's just something that you learn to live with. Like I, I expected that and it just makes the moments when they do respond that, that bit sweeter because it, like I said, it doesn't happen that often. Another thing that's been amazing over the six years is to do professional work. I've worked with so many big brands and so many teams and companies. Hibernian Football Club was the first one, which I've mentioned a few times on here. Get my work in Match Magazine. I've worked with Falcon Tires, which was quite a big one at the time. Marks and Spencer, I got asked to do, uh, have a, have one of my drawings in a Marks and Spencer advert, which was, I mean, that's just like ridiculous, really. I do some stuff with Young Minds, a mental health charity, which is amazing. So, you know, that's just a few of them. It's, it's, it's amazing to be asked to be part of these projects and, and that they trust dreadfully drawn to to fulfill what they they want and it's a, it's a great feeling and that that feeling never goes away really the the negative again is when you don't get asked and and you know sometimes you can go months and months and months without any any requests or any any queries regarding your work and i don't go out i don't go out looking for it i don't message companies i don't go message messaging like players or whatever to like share my work or anything like that i don't do any of that so really any project that comes about at the minute is because people have come to me rather than me go to them. That is something that I, I've considered changing, but I also don't like the idea of doing it. I understand that that is, that is probably what I should do, but I, I've, I've never I've never felt quite right doing it. Another, another high point, and this sort of ties in a couple really, is the response that my work gets. I love the idea that I send a print and someone can put that print on their wall. Again, it comes down to trust that someone trusts me to be able to do that and also wants my work on their wall or wants my work on their son or daughter's wall or, or the brother or sister, buy it for the brother or sister or whatever. I mean, such an amazing feeling and, and that's also sort of reciprocated by, um, I don't know if that was the right word, but I'll go ahead with it anyway. The response that I get 
on social media, people commenting on my work, people share my work, you know, some of the messages I get, are, are, you know, are, are so nice and I, and I really do appreciate it and, I, and it, you know, I feel very, very like privileged that my drawings help people after maybe a loss or help uh, add to the excitement of a win or people look out for my drawings after a game and I just love it. I honestly, I love it. You know, I've mentioned the football that is also a high and a low. A lot of these things that I'm saying are highs and lows are contrasting to each other. So it's amazing to be able to document the football season as it goes on. And when you have a high moment, like a, you know when Liverpool win a trophy, it's amazing. And obviously the response I get, you know, when Liverpool do well, generally my posts do better online. So the the opposite to that is when they're losing. Uh, it also feels like people are less interested in the drones, but it's just. Again, it's the highs and lows, and it has affected me over the past six years. I sometimes struggle with, you know, dealing with social media and the sort of pressures of having to upload all the time, and that's not because of people and their expectations. It's more the social media companies and their expectations. Like, if you don't post for a while, the social media will prioritise your work less, and it, it does start to play on your mind. Like, you start uploading things just for the sake of uploading it, just because you feel like you've got to, to be able to, like, maintain some form of, like, algorithmic fucking ah, it's horrible it's horrible it's horrible but it it also plays the other way where when it goes for you it goes for you and it's good and it feels good you know my instagram had this ma i think it was the start of 2022 my instagram had this sort of like massive burst of people interested in it and i, and I you know i've done this for five years at this point and not really had any or four years and, and not really had any sort of push from the instagram algorithm and suddenly like thousands of I mean at one point it had like a million people uh, that had seen the work over the, like the space of 30 days where it'd been like maybe a couple of hundred like six months earlier it was quite a big jump and that 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 comes with highs and lows because ultimately that's that number's gone unless I like somehow maintained it which I haven't like that also comes with a bit of a crash where you don't hit those numbers anymore you sort of go back down to what you originally were so Social media is definitely a high and a low, and I absolutely love the little sort of, uh, I'm not going to say community, don't say community. I love it when people enjoy my work, is, is, the, is the main point of that. Another massive one, and it's in the background here, there, is when my friend managed to get Jurgen Klopp to sign two of my prints. It's still a high point. It was three years ago this week that it happened, or that he gave me the prints, and um, it's still a massive high point. Like... It might be the high point of it all. The fact that he's seen my drones and signed it and didn't just turn away and say, I'm not signing that, like, it's ridiculous. What more can I say on that, really? So that that that's another big one. That's a huge one. That's sort of the highs and lows of it over the past six years. In terms of the present, I feel okay. I feel all right. Could be selling more prints. Probably should be selling more prints than what I do. It's just work, isn't it? Like, I've got to... to if I want to sell prints, I've got to put the work in to sell prints. Prints aren't just going to sell randomly. I've got to actually promote them, and I never promote my print store. You can go to my print store now if you want. It's stuff like that, like searching out for professional work and, and, and that sort of thing. In the future, let's do some future goals. I could do like a little jingle. Future goals. Get a personality. You know, um, I would like to be able to build this YouTube channel up, I think. that is That is a massive goal of mine. Like, no one really knows the future of YouTube, do they? But to be able to sort of create content that people watch and want to watch and also create short form videos consistently is something that I'm always struggling with. It's always something that I'm striving for and it, it just hasn't quite happened. And I don't know whether it's sort of time or effort, lack of effort. I, I don't know whether I can put lack of effort into the equation because I put so much time and effort into this thing that maybe I just need to devote a little bit more time to the video side of things. But like, I would really love to build this YouTube channel up and create content continually and have things scheduled continually where rather than like record this now, which I am, and then edit it straight away and then put it on straight away, like have this recorded two weeks ago. That is a goal of mine. That is something that I want to do. Another goal is to keep pushing it. I am conscious that people get sick of my work, but ultimately they can just unfollow me or block me, can't they? If they no longer want to see my work anywhere on social media or anywhere, you know, I they can block me. So... I've got to just think, no, I've got to keep pushing, keep pushing the boundaries of what my work can be and where my work can be seen because ultimately I want to be 
involved in more projects. I want to sell more prints. I want to create more content. I would like more followers. Um, and it's all just a game, isn't it, really? It's all just a game. And I'm always striving to be better, which is mad because generally in real life, like in person, I'm not like that at all. Like I, I have no real desire to be like, you know, I obviously want to better myself in in ways that I can. Like I, I start going to the gym and I want to eat better. I want to do all these things. But like something with Dreadfully Drawn where I just think I want to be, I want to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing it. I would also like to combine my love of this with my love of music. And I said in like three years ago, I don't know, three years ago, maybe like two years ago now, that I'm planning on making an album. Well, that album is still in motion. That album is still a thing, but I want to try and combine it with this, Dreadfully Drawn, and how I can sort of combine the two and almost like have the album as a Dreadfully Drawn thing. And I don't know how to sort of combine the two. And that's something that I've been tackling for a while, which is why the album is never getting finished. But it, it will get finished one day. It will. And maybe I'll play... No, I won't. So I would say they're the three main goals that I can think of. And I'm absolutely buzzing that I'm six years into this now. I'm aiming for 10. I'll be honest with you. I'm aiming for 10. There's, there's, there's no way I'm not getting a 10 unless I die. Which, you know, I don't really want to do. But, you know, these things can happen in life. Uh, I'm going all the way. I am going all the way. So, hopefully I'll see you next year. In the same video. I'll have to think of something different to do. Because I'm pretty sure I do this every year. Um, although, when I looked, I didn't do one for five years. I did one for four years. I didn't do one for five years. I don't know what I was doing then. Let's finish on a song. Because I feel like the videos ran its course. Uh... I can see there that I've been recording for 18 minutes. It's going to be an absolute ass on to, to edit. But um, I also said in the last video that the Beatles released a new song. I know it's true. It's all because of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me if you've supported me. Thank you for getting to this point in the video if you're still here. And uh, like I say, here's to another here's to another year, here's to another two year, three, four, five. Let's get to ten. Let's get to ten. And the let's aim for a thousand subscribers by my tenth year of doing this. Let's see where we're at there. Thank you for watching, as ever. Goodbye.